So we're sitting here with Sean Ray Hall. Sean, how are you today? I'm doing good. Good. Sean, you just had a session in the Apex 3. Got to ask you a couple questions. Um, talk to me about the pedals. I know you've used these pedals quite a bit, um, but tell me about how they feel and, and how, you, um, how you like them compared to what you drive in real life. Yeah, I mean, I think when you go to the brake pedal, when you actually have a good bled pedal in a race car, this feels really similar. The only difference is this pedal's actually there all the time, where in a race car, you know, you get brake fade, you get all that kind of stuff. But uh, no, the pedal system feels really good, and especially at a place like we're working on Sebring and Monza today, working on brake release, you know, you get a real feel for it to be able to start working on, you know, how you're taking the brake to the apex and how your trail off points are. And your initial hits pretty much within, I'd say, 50 to 100 pounds maximum as a real racing pedal. So, yeah, it's great. Now, you have the luxury of living in the Atlanta area where our shop is, so you get to, as a product ambassador, you get to come in anytime you want, especially when you're uh, making a trip overseas to get some extra seat time. But this is the first time you've had a chance to drive a uh, direct drive wheel. Tell me about the feedback of the wheel itself and uh, how you liked it in comparison to what you drive. I mean, you look at my heart rate monitor and I've got my heart rate up. So obviously it's, you know, it's a, it's a little bit of work. Feels real. I mean, you can obviously adjust this thing, but I like a lot of feel in the pedal or in the steering wheel actually. And, uh, you know, you really can feel different with this wheel than other simulator wheels is when the car starts to oversteer, you actually feel the catch when you're counter steering. And that's something I've never found in a simulator before. So this wheel has been, uh, you know, it's been really nice working with it today. And now I'm even more excited about coming back when I get to work on it is because, you know, it, it, it feels like I was driving a race car today. Like I was doing laps. I just didn't have consequences all the times I hit the wall. And one more new item that you tried today was the Oculus. Uh, first time for you. I mean, I know that there's a little bit of dialing in that goes on. You didn't have a lot of time in it, but talk to me about the immersion factor of, of utilizing the Oculus. I mean, I just didn't know what to do with my hands. Like, <laughs> like you're, you're sitting there and, you know, I was dr driving an LMP2 car today on iRacing, which I drive an LMPC car in real life, which you're sitting in the car and you're like, well, this is what I was doing last Thursday and Friday down at Sebring. Like it, it looks so real and then you're, you know, your sight going into the corner and when you actually turn into the corner is so much more genuine and, you know, that depth perception of when you're taking the apex and what you're dialing with the wheel. And then you put the pedals, the steering wheel and the Oculus all together and it's like a masterpiece. It's like, you know, I'd still say like if you look at what a test day costs in a race car, in a proper race car, you buy this thing and you're doing it. You know, this is this is as real as it gets. Now, since you brought it up, we're going to talk about it. We didn't make a lot of adjustments to the motion profile today, you know, so it was, for the most part, dialed into how you used it last. I mean, why do you love coming in here about, I mean, why is it that you choose us to, to handle all your test days prior to traveling? I mean, this, working with SimCraft is basically what's made me be on pace when I go over to Europe. You know, I, I get to Europe, I've never seen, you know, a place like Imola last year, never saw it. My fourth lap put us p3 in the first session period and i'd never been there and i was you know out of the top 10 drivers i was the only one who hadn't been there so you know doing this and the repetitiveness and the laps are just like going to the track and testing for me you know even when it's something where it's an lmp3 car that's a, a Janetta versus a leger and it's not exactly apples to apples Doing this and this repetition of laps really teaches me the track and gives me that point of vision to where when I get to the track, I roll off like I've been there before. Monza was a new track for you. You said you had never really seen it in real life before. So talk about the experience with, with learning that, that facility. Yeah, I mean, and it, that facility also has a lot of feel because you got a lot of middle, middle speed corners that are second, third gear where you're rolling a lot of speed and you're kind of trying to find the right dynamic between sending it into the corner but at the same time being able to get a good run off. And with this wheel is where, you know, when you get that little bit of oversteer in, you can actually correct it and redial in and not lose lap time, which is like a real race car, you know, and that's where we're always trying to find that limit. And now we're finding limits on simulators where before you look back five, ten years ago and everything was just numb and you're, you know, sitting behind a computer and you have your, you know, your steering wheel from Best Buy. You know, this is, this is real. You know, I'm, I, I got a lot out of today. I got my notepad down there and I'm writing notes on, you know, I feel like I need to work on this when I go to Monza, and I feel like when we get to the prologue for European Le Mans, 
I got a list of notes of what I did today that are driver characteristics for me that I know I need to kind of already have insight on before I get on track there. I know we were working with Sebring a little bit and you learned a couple of things. I know that you're, there was times where I was watching where you caught a little bit with the yaw and the oversteer. Uh, tell me what, what you learned today at Sebring that you didn't know before. Uh, today I learned some, some interesting things about 17. You know, I kind of had a different perspective on it, I would say. Um, and just a, a few things in regards to, um, you know, you can run different gears. It's always a catch between whether I want to run second and 13 or I want to run third. And, you know, when you're going to qualify, you know, if second's a tenth or two faster, but, you know, in the race you're trying to make, save tires and, you know, maintain your gearbox and try to do as the least amount of downshifts as possible. So then you're going to run third. But, you know, I found a little bit by using second gear today personally in turn 13, which I think will help me as well as, um, you know, in turn seven, where you're downshifting from six to first, basically, basically going down in there and getting it all the way down to second, and then turning in and doing your downshift to first on the way down to the apex, which kind of allows you to release the brake a little bit, and then you don't have this rear lockup that we get a lot of times in, in prototypes because of the bumps there. So you do the last downshift after a bump, getting into the corner, which therefore lets the car roll a little bit more speed. You don't get the oversteer in. You get a smoother and better exit. So if I understood you correctly, you come in here, you get in a SimCraft that has proper feel, you learn things and you try things that you wouldn't do on track just so you could learn better techniques for when you get on track. Is that correct? Exactly. And, and I'm not hitting the wall when I joke about hitting the wall. I'm not hitting the wall doing things that are stupid. I'm hitting the wall finding limits. And now I have new limits when I get in the real race car at the 12 hours of Sebring. Awesome. Sean Rahal, pro race car driver, just another one of our product ambassadors that utilizes SimCraft technology for his practice time when he's not on track. Thanks, Sean. Thank you.